Welcome to our channel and thanks for tuning in. Now I know that God has a word not just for you, but he also has a word through us for you. Now we're about to start. Make yourself comfortable and let's venture into God's word together. Father, I just want to say thank you. Just as we just watched just now, Lord, we are reiterating how grateful we are. How grateful we are because we serve a great God. We are full of gratitude because you have been not only good to us, but good through us. We bless your holy name and we exalt you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. We bless you, oh God. We exalt you. We magnify you. We ask, oh God, that as we share together, Lord, let there be utterance release, a release of power, a release of grace, and, and energize, and Lord, in the hearts of your people, in the name of Jesus, because you who have brought us this far, you will not leave us, not now, not ever. For you told us, lo, you will be with us even unto the end of the age. And so we, we rest in your truth. Be glorified, our God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to rejoice with you for the next couple of minutes that we have together and to say that how exciting it, it is to not only watch the, the, the video that we watched of Maria, but even the, the Arise and Shine that we just watched it, it was near on a whole year ago, almost a year ago now, about nine months at least, that we watched that. And the words of that, uh, of, of, the, of those clips are still as true this second as they were back then. That is a faithful, consistent God, a dependable God that has been able to make that to come to pass. And so I want to encourage you with a very short word today, I mean, I can't go, I can't open all the scriptures. I'm trying to figure out which one of them I should go for first. But I definitely want to impress upon your heart this, this line, which is to weaponize your, your praise. You know, tell your neighbor, it's time to weaponize your praise. It means to, to, to see and to understand and to accept that your praise can be and is already a weapon. You just need to know how to utilize it as a weapon. This is the time that God has given unto us to weaponize our praise. See, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 from verse 3 to 5, it says, look, we don't walk in the flesh, for we, and therefore we do not war after the flesh. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting on imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience in Christ Jesus. See, because we recognize that our weapons, you know, we've been fighting so many invisible things. We've been fighting an invisible virus, fighting an invisible enemy, fighting invisible fear. You know, we can't see fear, but we can, we can feel the fear. It is as real as the things that we see. We, we can't see uh, anxiety, but many are fighting the, 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 the effects of anxiety, the, the, the dangerous effect of anxiety. And all these things come at us. Some people are fighting loneliness, social isolation. There's so many things that are, that are battling with us. People feel in, you know, people that have not been, um, they've not been checked up on and nobody, they don't know, if nobody knows them and they're feeling rejected. And rejection can be a really hurtful thing, a really painful thing. But the weapons that we have at our disposal, they are not carnal. They are not natural. They are, they are supernatural because the, the, the issues that we're dealing with are out of the natural. They are beyond the natural. What happens when you're trying to fight a, an invisible thing with a visible thing is that you don't, you don't get any success there. And so many people have been trying this for a long time, but we have been at a war for, for such a long time. And there was a man of God called Je Jehoshaphat, which we'll, we'll, we'll touch on very shortly. I'll give, give you a brief thing about who this man Jehoshaphat was and what it is that occurred in his life. But what I want to impress upon your heart is this, that through it all, we have to recognize that God has weapons that we can utilize to fight in a war that is in the invisible realm. A war that is that is outside of just the natural realm. Not everything is natural. 
everything has its origin in the invisible realm. And so we as a people need to be equipped to do so. Just like in the, in the, the, the natural army will have bazookas, grenades, and uh, machine guns, AK-47s, and, and all sorts of armory and artillery and things like that. In the same way, heaven has its own artillery. Heaven has its own armory, you know, the name of Jesus. What a powerful weapon that is. The word of God. The Bible says it is like the, the two-edged sword. It is a very effective weapon. We have the weapon of the blood of Jesus. We have the weapon of, of giving. We have the weapon. There's so many of these weapons, and one of them, one of the one of the most amazing, incredible weapons that we have is a weapon that I wanted to get comfortable using all the time. It's the weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. That's that's how we weaponize our praise. See, praise is a powerful weapon. It is not praise is not telling God who God is. That's the, okay, let's get let's get that out there now. It is not just telling God who God is because God already knows who He is. God already knows who He is. He is not waiting for you to remind him of who he is. Praise is you telling yourself, telling the devil, telling your situation, telling the problem how big your God is. We're too, we've gotten so comfortable telling God how big our problems are. We've gotten so comfortable telling God how, how uh, annoying, how sometimes how powerful. Some people have talked to God about how powerful the devil is. Some people have gotten so comfortable telling God how, how massive, how incredible this problem is. How, how unbelievable the circumstances that we have found ourselves in. How God, can't you see how much this is? Can't you, when we were so good, we have become articulate telling God about how big our circumstances are, and praise is getting articulate, telling the problem, telling the devil, telling your, your, your inner man, telling your circumstances, telling the situations around you, telling the world how big your God is, how incredible your God is. So when we, when we sing, Eze, you are worthy of our praise, Oh, you are worthy of our praise. I'm saying that in spite of the things that I'm facing. I'm saying that regardless of the things that are happening to me. I'm saying that regardless of the armies that gather around me. I'm saying that because that is the way I can stand and remain standing when everything around me is falling apart. When my mind seems to be to be going all over the pra- all over the place, that's the time I remind myself. I, it is me that I'm reminding. I'm not reminding God of who He is or how great He is. I'm reminding me that I saw of a God who is able to keep me even until the day of reckoning. I'm telling my mind. I'm telling my circumstance. I'm telling the, the, the doctor's report. I'm telling the issues that are, that are coming at me. That though you come against me in one way, I serve a consuming fire who goes ahead of me. And he is the one who is able to deliver me. Like the children of Israel, that the three Hebrew boys said, they said, our God is able to deliver us. Our God, praise is declaring God to the issue, not declaring your issue to God. We can we can bring our issues to God in supplication. We can bring our issues to God in prayer. But there comes a time when it is it is too much. We have, we've, we've exhausted. Exhausted. We, we've described the situation too much to God. Okay, he knows now. It's about time now. Let's start describing our God to that situation. Start describing how omnipotent he is. Start describing how omniscient he is. Omnipotent means he can do all things. Start tell, tell the situation how great your God is. Tell the situation how big your God is. Tell the situation that your God is eternal. That that thing had a beginning, therefore it will have an end. But we serve a God who has no beginning, therefore cannot have an end. He is eternal. He is mighty. He is great. The Bible says he's my shield. My shield. He is my buckler. He's the lifter up of my head. My God in whom I trust. He says, I have placed my trust in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not be moved. I cannot be moved. It is not because of me, but it's because of in whom I have placed my faith. I anchored myself in him. Praise is bringing God into the situation. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 149, it says, for the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. This is how you use praise as a weapon. You recognize that God, the Bible says he inhabits. 
he he takes he takes a residence he moves in when the, when the when the palace of praise has been built when the palace of praise has been erected god moves into that situation guess what the bible tells me in the book of john it says that light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it which means if i can only get light to shine in my darkness i know darkness cannot comprehend it my issue is how do i get the light and he is the light and that light is the light of all men He's the, in him is life, and that life is the life of all men. So I need to get find a way to, 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 to invite, to make comfortable the power, the person, the presence of the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God. I know if he wades into the situation, even if it's in a hospital bed, if he wades into that hospital, if he wades into that condition, if he wades into that situation, if he wades into that that army that is coming against me if only i can have the master have the one true god the one who has never lost a battle the one who can raise the dead the god who heals the sick who tells the lame man to walk the one the bible says at the sound of his voice he strips the forest bare and he causes the deer to give birth that god if i can bring him into my situation I'm telling you, I don't need an extra weapon. That becomes weaponized already. And the Bible tells me how to get, how to, how to invite the master, how to make him feel comfortable in my environment. It says I should praise. It says for the Lord inhabits. The Lord takes residence. The Lord steps in. The Lord sits and is comfortable in the praises of his people. So before you pray, praise. Before you pray, praise. After you have prayed, praise. When you don't know how to pray, praise. Why? Praise is not dependent on your own vocabulary. There are times all you have to do is go to the Psalms. Go to as many, have a book where you just write of the goodness of God. And you just read it back out to yourself. Read it back out to yourself. Say it out again. Say it out again. That the Lord is my shield and my buckler. Say it out again. The Lord is my ever-present help in a time of trouble. Say it out again. He's the one that defeated the the other. He defeated. He defeated uh, Pharaoh. He defeated as many as it is. The ones he did in your life, the one he did in your sister's life, the one he did in that brother's life, the one he did in my mother's life, my father's life, my cousin's life, the one he did in the Bible that we have. Listen, I cannot get tired. I cannot run out of areas to praise God for. Why? It is not limited to the things he did for me alone. Look at 2020. Look at the things that God has done. Look at how many people that we had that there were some of them were in court. Coma. Someone they were put in an induced coma. There were people who were sick. There were people who were down. But the mighty God, and some of you that are listening to this, you might be down, you might be sick, you might be in a, you, you might be uh, they, 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 they detected and said, oh, you are positive, you're COVID positive, or, or whatever it is. We are here to say with you, it is time to weaponize your praise. It is time to weaponize. Let your praise become a weapon in your hand. Let your praise become a weapon that you utilize. Even if you are bound right now, there's a place to still praise. There's a place to still call upon how good God is. I was, I was sharing with some of my leaders this morning. And, and one of them commented to another, another leader and said, oh, wow, my sister, you're looking so good. You are looking really, really good today. And she turned around and she said something. I said, no, 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 we need to share this with other people. She goes, I thank God that I do not look like what I have been through. Oh, my God. Aren't you glad that you don't look like what you've been through? Aren't you glad that you went through the waters and you are not soaking? You went through the fire and you are not singed. You are not smelling of smoke. It is not because you did not go through. But when you went through, the Bible says, goodness and mercy were your bodyguards. They were going alongside with you. They covered you. They watched over you. You know where you have been. You know what you have been through. You know how your mind could have... Look, Greater men, greater people have been through what you have been through and they are no more. Their mind is gone. They have lost it all. But God has packaged you, preserved you. The very present of in a time of trouble. He is your, he's your, he's your, he's your covering. He has been that covering. And it is time that you say that. You, you respond back to God. You speak that back to God. You tell God back that. You are not, you're not informing him. You are informing it. The it's around you. The 
things around you. You are informing them of how great your God is. In the book of Acts uh, of the Apostles, chapter number 16, the Bible says how they put Paul and Silas, they put them in the thickest part of the jail. They tie them up and they lock them up. But at midnight hour, at the midnight hour, it was no more time for Paul and Silas to be praying to God about the prison doors, to be praying to God about the prison guard, to pray to God about the shackles, to pray to God about the bars. God sees that. He knows that. But this was time for, uh, for Paul and Silas to begin to tell the prison bars about their God who is a, a bar bending. Bible says he cast their he cast their, 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 their shackles, their, their bonds of iron, he cast it asunder. He cast it asunder. And the Bible says they began to praise unto God. They began to call upon the Lord. They began to worship him. They began to glorify him. And somebody who is there, who is taking notes, might be thinking, what is there to pray about? What is there to praise about? What is there to thank God about? Can't you see that you are locked up? Can't you see that you're shackled? Can't you see that you're in prison? Can't you see that they're going to kill you tomorrow? Can't you see they're going to behead you? But yet, they might be planning that. But thanks be to God that they have not been able to bring that about the, the fruition of that plan. No wonder the Bible says everything. Let everything that has breath, let them praise the Lord. Everything that has breath. Why? If you still have breath, it means God is still working on you. It means God is still doing something in you. It means God is still working, working something out in the land of the living begin to declare and say i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living because my god is good listen even if you have family who have whom you have, we have lost in this pandemic and they have gone on to be with the lord Paul, I, I refuse for anything to steal my praise. That's the time that the scripture kicks in. Paul says that for me to be with you is gain. For me to die is gain. To, for to live is Christ. Which means either way, I'm still going to praise. I'm still going to praise. You know, I had more, one of my aunties that died um, not too long ago, about two, three weeks ago. My, my, my song to myself and my song to the people that are around me, to the family, is that thanks be to God that she knew the Lord. Thanks be to God that God came to save her. Because now we know that an, for an eternity, she has the privilege of being in the presence of the Most High. We refuse for anything to steal our praise. We refuse for anything to steal our praise. You weaponize it by utilizing. It. You weaponize it by saying it despite of the things that you are going through. As Paul and Silas began to sing praise unto God, the, the analogy is that the Most High, according to his word, he has to be faithful. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So he had to inhabit the space where they were. It is a good thing that they put them in a small cell. It is a good thing that the cell was so small that when the omnipresent God, the all-present God, the almighty God, when he waded it into when he came into their prison, uh, or into their cell, into their jail, as he waded into that, there was no, nothing else could happen, but the whole place had to start to expand. The whole place had to begin to shake. Why? The Almighty was now taking residence in the palace of praise that was built then. Why don't you begin a palace of praise? Begin the a construction of a palace of praise unto the Most High God. Let that let there be pray, let the praise in your mouth never run dry. When others are trying to invite you to complain, refuse to complain and begin to compliment the Lord. Begin to compliment the Lord. Listen, in the very area that you are lacking, in the very area that you are being threatened in, that is the way, that is the time to speak about the goodness of God in that very area. In that very area, uh, was it David in the book of Psalm 18? David says, I will call upon the Lord, the Lord who is worthy to be praised. It says, in this manner, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies as I call upon the God who is worthy of praise. When you're calling upon God who is worthy to be praised, that is actually praise. You know, in book of Psalm, um, Proverbs chapter number uh, 3, verse 5 and 6, is a very common um, um, proverb that, that most people know. You know, it talks about, you know, commit your ways unto the Lord and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do you know that uh, the more I read it, the more I thought about it. What does it mean to acknowledge God? Is it that to, to, to tell God what's going on? No, he already knows. How can you... How can you inform the all-knowing God about what is going on? No, it is the other way around. It is to recognize. 
It is to recognize God in the thing that is going on. It is to recognize his power, to recognize his wisdom, to recognize his sovereignty. That is the time where you begin to tell God that, Lord, I don't know what is going on, but I thank God that you do. I thank you that you do. I thank you that nothing happens to you by surprise. That I think we were doing the praise and worship. Sister Aura was singing and she was leading the, the worship and said that 2020 did not take God by surprise. What a That is a powerful word of praise to say, thank you, oh God, that nothing surprises you. That the things that hit us, Lojiji, the things that hit us by surprise cannot surprise you. Therefore, I, because I am rested in you, I have true rest in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how you weaponize your praise. The, the man Jehoshaphat, he had heard that three three kingdoms were coming up against him and they were mightier than him. No doubt. They were mightier than the children of Israel. They were mightier than the children of Judah, sorry. And as they came up against him, and they, it, um, Jehoshaphat went, he prayed, he called upon the Lord. And as the Lord began to cry, sorry, as began to cry upon the Lord, they called the people, they fasted, they prayed, they did all that. And the Lord spoke through uh, Hazael. And Hazael, the prophet, came and said, look, Tell the people, tell, tell Jehoshaphat and the people that you will not need to fight in this matter. It says, you shall hold your peace. Please, that part I do need to read. It says, all you will do is hold your peace. That's all he told them. You will hold your peace and you will not need to fight in this matter. The Lord will fight for you. For the battle is the Lord. We, we think that as I told them or the Lord told them that don't fight, just praise me. That's not what the Lord said. All the Lord told Jahaziel was simple. Tell him you will not need to fight in this. Hold your peace. This battle is not yours. It is the Lord. It was the wisdom of God that came upon uh, Jehoshaphat that when it was time to battle and God said, okay, march out against them. Go up against them. But don't worry, you are not fighting in this. Jehoshaphat thought, okay, fine. Are we just going to stand there and just fold our arms and watch? said, no. He, he then placed the singers. He placed those who, and, it's, and he commanded them to praise the Lord. He commanded them to sing unto the Lord. He commanded them to glorify the Lord. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. That was the word that was, that was given in, from verse number 15 of 2 Chronicles chapter, chapter number 20. It says, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up at the ascent of Ziv, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. That was the word that was given. But by the time you get to where Jehoshaphat is sending them out, verse number 20. So uh, they rose early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa and they went out. Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when they are consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. He appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and we were saying praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever listen to what they were saying there they were going out against an army that was mightier than they God didn't tell them what song to sing God didn't tell them oh praise me when you go out but Jehoshaphat knew wait hang on if we're going to stand before them, we are going to declare to the problem how great our God is. Just praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So their focus was on that we serve a God whose mercy is able, whose mercy endures forever. Listen, the fullness of that, of that, the, 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 that, that phrase is this. The Bible says, for his anger is but for a short time. But, for his, but his mercy, his loving kindness is for a lifetime, is forever, is it's for, for eternal. So when he says that for his mercy to endure forever, he's also saying that we know that even if it was his anger before, his anger has already been appeased because it's for a short time. But we are praising the God 
whose mercy is forever. We are focusing on the God whose mercy is forever. So this is not the time to start focusing on the things that have gone wrong. It's the time to begin to look at the things that, are, that God has done. The, thing, the areas where God has shown up for you, the, area, the things in God, the attributes of God that refer to the situation that you are dealing with. Are you sick? Begin to thank the God who is a healer. Begin to remind yourself of all the different times when God has healed. Are you, are you down, depressed, and, and just dejected? Begin to thank God who is your counselor. He's a mighty counselor. Begin to thank God who is able to give you joy and give you that joy above all things. Thank the God who is your peace, who gives you peace that is, that is beyond understanding. Are you confused? Thank God that he gives you sound mind. Begin to, don't, don't pray about sound mind alone but as you're praying about it be thanking him for it thank him that oh lord father thank you that before i even came to pray that you have already promised that you have not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind i thank you because you have said already that i will hear the voice behind me telling me which way i should go i thank you because you have granted me a heart lord that is that is that is lean on onto discernment to be able to receive from you to receive instruction to receive direction to receive encouragement in the name of Jesus. Are you feeling powerless? Thank God that, that you are the one who promised that you will give unto me your Holy Spirit and I will receive power and I will be your witness. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father, you thank God for that, that my prayers are not, they're not, they're not empty, that they're not just empty words. I thank you because you honor my prayers because you are a prayer honoring Father. We thank God. Let your praise be electrified. Refuse anything to remove praise from your mouth. As we end the, the, the year 2020, refuse anything and anyone to steal praise from your mouth, especially individuals or institutions that have occurred to try and rip the, to, 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 to change your focus and to change your tongue to begin to, to talk about complaints and to talk about things that have not happened and wickedness that has happened here. And, you know, some people are so good at de describing the works of the devil, how accurate the devil has been operating. I refuse to do that. Instead, I want to talk about how good my God is. I want to talk about that even though the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour, I thank God that God, God is the one that comes to give me life and give me this life more abundantly. I thank God that he is, Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I thank God that he who is in God, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I thank God that greater are they who are for me than they who are against me. I thank God that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purposes. I thank God. And what shall we therefore say to this thing? If God be for us, then who can be against us? I thank God that no weapon formed or fashioned against me shall prosper. I, in doing that, I am weaponizing my praise. I am turning my praise into a weapon because the enemy cannot stand it. The enemy is intimidated by your praise because he's trying to stop you from calling on to God, stop you from looking to God, stop you from focusing on God. But when you make a dogged decision, I refuse to turn my eyes away from God. I refuse to turn my tongue away from God. When you make that decision, you intimidate the enemy. You intimidate the, the enemy. The wicked one has no rule over you. It begins to speak into your heart, speak into your soul. The Lord begins to speak into your heart, energize your soul, energize everything that is within you, and you begin to rise. You begin to rise. We have to, we have to round up, but I, I do want to encourage you that as this, as this week has, has, has started already, energize, weaponize. Let your praise become a recognized the, the ability of your praise to be a weapon, to overcome, to overcome. Don't, don't just pray and say, oh, yeah, no, I'm just giving God my praise. No, this is one of the weapons that we have to overcome. As you are getting ready to cross into the new calendar year, cross over in power, cross over in might, cross over in confidence, cross over in, with excitement in the name of the Lord Jesus. I rejoice with you. I know there's so much more that we could have shared together, but I rejoice with you that you go in the power of the Lord. You go in the might of the Lord. I commend you unto God and unto the word of his power. 
which is able to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. He's able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. So be built up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you that nothing will steal your praise, but as you open your mouth, even if you didn't know what to say and you're struggling to praise, I pray that Jehovah will fill your mouth with good things, that you will be able to speak you be able to speak to your burden, speak to your condition, speak to your situation, and speak the power of God. Speak the person of God. Speak the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be so in your life. If you're sick, I declare that the God who is able, more than able, more than able, God, you who have shown yourself strong in time past, that you will do the same in the life of my brother or my sister who needs your healing power right now. We thank you because you have shown yourself that none of these things are too big for you. You have, you, you have demonstrated your mastery over the conditions, Lord, that cripple mankind. You have shown up already, Lord, that you are above it all. We glorify you. We magnify you. And we rejoice in you. Till next time. We rejoice with you as you are at home. We rejoice with you as with your families. We rejoice with you in all that God has called you to do. We will see you again by the grace of God. We'll be birth and life wherever we flow. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to this channel. I hope that this message has made an impact in your life. Now don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can keep up with the things that God is doing through and in us. Okay, till next time. We remain flowing rivers. We're birthed in life wherever we flow. Birth in life wherever we flow.